Hello and welcome to Elementary STEM with Ms. Crosman. Today's lesson is about paper bridges. And this is a great lesson for students to do if you don't want to have a lot of cross-contamination of materials in your classroom this year or if you are distance learning because it literally only takes a few pieces of scrap paper, something to support your bridge, and some sort of weights to test your bridge. And this is going to be one of those activities that you want to have an, a lot of extra pieces of scrap paper on hand because you want students to be able to test and try a variety of different bridges before they commit to what they think is going to be their best bridge. What we end up using in my class to prop up our bridges are typically books. Specifically, we like to borrow the 2001 set of encyclopedias from the library because nobody else is using those. So we use them for a lot of things in my classroom from um, bridge supports to weights on the top of our towers. Also, you're going to need something to test the strength of your bridges. In my early years of teaching STEM, I went through my dirt driveway and picked up a couple hundred rocks, which we also used in my gravity glue rock stacking um, challenge. A link to that video is right up here. If you want to check it out, I'll put it in the description below as well. However, I find another great thing for the classroom to use as weights are these glass beads that you can get at the dollar store. We have a lot of these. We use these for a lot of different challenges and experiments where we're testing weight. Now the first thing we like to do is look at some different shapes of bridges and I'll often provide some pictures of those and then we talk about how we might be able to build a bridge using just two sheets of paper. Now the rule with today's activity is you can't use any tape because what I find is sometimes when students are using tape that they end up using tape to strengthen the bridge and that's not the point. We want the bridge itself to just be made from paper. We usually start off with a brainstorming session about how you might be able to use paper to make a bridge and students typically come up with the idea of folding it because then it's twice as thick, twice as strong. This is just a basic platform bridge. Then if they get stuck there we start talking about ways that you can fold the paper to make it stronger. For example, this is a truss. And in a truss bridge, we have folded up the edges just a little bit, but that adds an incredible amount of strength, as you'll see in a minute when I test these bridges. And then I had one class of, I think they were fourth graders at the time, that came up with the idea of folding the paper like a corrugated piece of cardboard. But they, fold, they initially folded both of them in the same direction, but then as they were experimenting, they alternated the direction so that they... So the folds went perpendicular to one another and they were able to hold an incredible amount of weight using this model. For bridge supports today we're going to use books and I'm going to place them approximately six inches apart. If we were doing this in the classroom I would make sure that everybody had a set of rulers so they could measure this. And then I'm going to test the first bridge model which is just our platform bridge. Now this first bridge can't even support a single rock which is my lightest weight possible. So this bridge is my first failure. Now I'm gonna test my truss bridge and I'm gonna make sure that I am putting these rocks in the middle of the bridge and not on the edges. Students will sometimes put the rocks on the edges of the bridges and that actually supports the bridge and holds it in place. It almost becomes like a suspension bridge when you do that. So I make sure that I define that only, the rocks can only go between the two Peer supports. So let's see how many rocks this one holds. Okay, so not going to count the last one. This bridge held five rocks before it collapsed. Now I'm going to try my accordion bridge. use balance. All right. 
So this one held one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This one held eight rocks successfully and then collapsed on the ninth one. Remember that this is a lesson that you can assign across multiple grades because you can adjust the constraints. How many pieces of paper the students are allowed to use, what type of weights you use, how far apart the peers are going to be, any of those things can make this challenge easier or harder. Also, even the type of paper that you give the students. Sometimes I might give younger grades firmer paper like construction or cardstock, well as the older students have copy paper for this. Another variation on this lesson that we've done is that I've used three by five or four by six note cards and given the students a couple of those to use. The difference with that is that um, there wasn't enough surface area on the bridges to be able to really test them. We ended up having to take paper cups and place those on top of the bridges so that we could put our weights in the paper cups to be able to use them. But that's another easy variation that you can do, but of course you're going to have to bring your peers in closer because um, obviously the 4x6 or the 3x5 card can't span a distance of 6 inches. If your school happens to have a Mystery Science online curriculum subscription, there's also a lesson about paper bridges within that curriculum that I often show the students a video or two about what makes the strength of a bridge and some different examples of bridges before we start this activity. It's not necessary, but it's a good supplement if you want to give it a try.